a 50 caliber machine gun that fires like a rifle. Sounds impossible, right? The NSV Utios didn't roar or climb like the others. It stayed flat, steady, almost calm. Soviet engineers somehow turned one of the world's most violent cartridges into controlled precision by reshaping recoil itself. In the next minutes, you'll see how geometry, timing, and balance made the Utios break every rule of heavy firepower. Let's quickly dive into how it works. Under the armor plate exterior, the Utios is pure mechanical harmony. It operates on a gas-driven action where expanding gases from each fired round cycle the weapon automatically. A small hole in the barrel diverts a fraction of those gases into a piston, which pushes the bolt carrier rearward. That motion extracts the spent case, compresses the recoil spring, and feeds a new cartridge into the chamber. This self-regulating rhythm spreads recoil over a slightly longer pulse, softening the blow. Instead of one massive kick, the energy is released as a smooth push. The timing, gas port diameter, and spring resistance were all tuned until that impulse felt balanced. The barrel and receiver are aligned in a perfectly straight axis. That might sound like a small thing, but it changes everything. Recoil now travels backward instead of upward, keeping the muzzle stable. Many machine guns of the time had offset barrel lines that caused their muzzles to climb. The NSV solved that geometrically. Internally, the locking system secures the bolt into a rigid lockup each time the chamber closes. This stability keeps the barrel from flexing, maintaining accuracy over sustained fire. The engineers borrowed lessons from both the AK-47 and the PKM machine gun, scaling them for the heavier 12.7mm cartridge. Its cyclic rate of 700 to 800 rounds per minute might sound arbitrary, but it's deliberate. Too high and the gun becomes unmanageable. Too low and suppression power disappears. The NSV sits in the sweet spot, fast enough to overwhelm, slow enough to steer. When mounted, the feed system accepts 50 round belts, either cloth or metallic. Every link feeds smoothly thanks to a simplified ratchet mechanism that pulls rounds in line with the chamber instead of snapping them sideways, a small but brilliant tweak that reduces jams. All these micro decisions, including alignment, timing, weight, and rhythm, merge into one sensation, stability. That's why, when crews describe firing the Utios, they don't talk about noise or flash. They talk about control. A 12.7 times 10 to the 8th millimeter cartridge generates brutal energy. One shot from this round releases nearly twice the kinetic force of a .50 BMG. On paper, that should make the NSV impossible to handle, yet it feels surprisingly civilized. Its designers solved this by understanding momentum transfer. The NSV's heavy receiver acts as an anchor while the bolt and operating group are relatively light. When fired, those lighter parts move just enough to cycle the action, but not enough to create secondary recoil. It's the same principle that makes a well-balanced engine run smoothly. Controlled motion beats raw force. Mounted on its 6T7 tripod, the gun becomes even steadier. The mount's geometry channels recoil straight into the ground, absorbing shock and minimizing vibration. Soviet manuals taught gunners to fire, in short, rhythmic bursts, three to five rounds, allowing the weapon to settle naturally after each pulse. The effect is almost hypnotic. The muzzle dips, rises slightly, then locks back into position. Vehicle versions went further. As the NSVT, the gun sat atop tanks like the T-72, T-80, and later the T-90. Operators could aim and fire it remotely from inside armored cabins using periscopic sights. That meant a single soldier could engage infantry or aircraft without ever exposing themselves. Recoil management wasn't just about comfort, it directly improved accuracy and efficiency. In field tests, the NSV consumed nearly 30% fewer rounds to neutralize targets compared to its predecessor. Each burst counted. Each second of fire mattered. For a weapon of this class, that's revolutionary. Even heat was accounted for. The barrel forged with chrome-lined steel endured hundreds of rounds before losing accuracy. Engineers widened the gas block to vent excess pressure, keeping internal temperatures lower. 
Combined with a quick change barrel latch, crews could swap barrels mid-battle in seconds. The entire system was built for longevity, not fragility. Raw energy is meaningless if it can't be directed. The NSV's genius was in turning chaos into precision. Firing the 12.7 by 108 millimeter round, it could pierce 20 millimeters of steel at over 500 meters, disable trucks, and even down low-flying aircraft. However, what shocked NATO observers was its grouping, the ability to keep bursts within tight target zones at ranges over two kilometers. That consistency made it a multi-role weapon. On vehicles, it shredded ambushes before they formed. On tripods, it became a fortress gun, and in anti-aircraft mode, it tracked fast-moving helicopters with lethal accuracy. Part of this came from its controlled rate of fire. Instead of wasting belts in long, uncontrollable streams, trained crews delivered precise salvos. Five round bursts, then correction. In mountainous terrain like Afghanistan, that approach was perfect. Soviet gunners used the NSV to pin down Mujahideen positions hidden behind rocks and slopes. One short burst often ended an entire fight. Even under dust storms and freezing winds, it maintained this poise. Reports from Afghan veterans describe the weapon as honest, what you aimed at, you hit. Its minimal climb and repeatable rhythm made it feel almost semi-automatic at times. That rifle-like behavior isn't just a metaphor. It's a mechanical truth born from balance and timing. A heavy machine gun that could act with the restraint of a rifle was something completely new and decades later still unmatched. You must be wondering where it all started. Well, in the late 1960s, the Soviet Union's battlefield doctrine was evolving. Tanks and armored personnel carriers dominated the landscape, and infantry needed portable weapons that could counter both air and ground threats. Their old workhorse, the DSHK, was built for another era, rugged but outdated, massive in weight and expensive to produce. The Soviet military wanted a single system that could serve everywhere, from a border checkpoint to a tank turret. It had to handle the same 12.7 times 10 to the 8th millimeter cartridge, yet be lighter, while being faster to deploy and easier to maintain under battlefield pressure. Three engineers, Grigory Nikitin, Yuri Sokolov, and Vladimir Volkov, rose to the challenge. Together, they spent years refining prototypes, testing gas systems, and shaving grams off every part without sacrificing strength. Their philosophy was simple, strip everything unnecessary, keep only what guarantees reliability. When the final prototype emerged, it weighed nearly 20% less than the DSHK with a shorter profile and faster assembly time. In 1971, it entered Soviet service as the NSV Utyos, literally cliff. The name was fitting, unmoving, unshakable, a rock in the chaos of battle. From Afghanistan to Eastern Europe, it replaced the DSHK almost overnight. Its lighter frame and simplified manufacturing made it a logistics dream. Yet what truly stunned operators wasn't its portability, it was how controlled it felt. It didn't fight back, it obeyed. Every Soviet weapon had to survive the unforgiving triad of mud, ice, and neglect. The NSV was no exception, and it passed with ease. With fewer parts than the DSHK and a gas system tolerant of fouling, it could go thousands of rounds between cleanings. The oversized piston, broad extractor, and generous clearances kept it from seizing even when soaked in sand or frozen overnight. Field reports all repeat the same phrase, it never stopped working. Logistically, it was a commander's dream. Spare parts were simple, interchangeable, and cheap to produce. The same core gun could serve as an anti-aircraft mount or a static defense gun with only minor changes in brackets and sights. By the 1990s, the Russian Federation sought an upgrade and introduced the cord, an improved descendant with polymer components and even softer recoil. Still, the DNA of the NSV runs straight through it. Many armies refused to retire their Utios units. The phrase, if it isn't broken, don't fix it, was practically written for this gun. Today, more than 50 years later, NSVS remain active across Asia, Eastern Europe, and Africa. Mounted on pickup trucks, fortified walls, and naval decks, they continue to perform the same job they were designed for, steady fire under pressure. 
Its influence stretched beyond the battlefield. The NSV became a reference point in weapon design textbooks and military academies, a lesson in how mechanical harmony can outperform brute strength. Engineers worldwide still study its recoil pattern when designing new large caliber systems. That's its real legacy, not just endurance, but education. A machine gun that became a teacher. The NSV, Utios, changed the language of firepower. It proved that heavy didn't have to mean wild, that even a .50 caliber monster could move with grace if built with purpose. Every mechanism inside it follows one philosophy, stability through design. The result is a weapon that doesn't waste energy and never wastes potential. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit like, subscribe, and tell me which weapon you want to see next. Because once you understand how it works, you start to see that even the loudest machines whisper precision.